Hello everyone and welcome back to another nano do I call it episode? I've done the lobster number so long I've forgotten entirely what my normal shtick is for my exhibition matches. Well anyway, welcome back to another exhibition match. I'm your host Dominic or Shadow Fear, whichever you prefer. And we are going to be finishing off with a match between Dan Warrior and Bloa. Those of you wondering from the last game, my cat just wanted to say hi and get some pets and scritches, so I give him some pets and scritches. Anyhow, with that, we have Spiders for Dan and Cloakie for Bloa on Wanderlust, which, yeah, actually, the spiders make a lot of sense. See, the factory that's weird but actually makes a lot of sense in this map is tanks. You see that sometimes. But, no, Spiders and Cloakie is... Spiders, Cloakie, Shield, those are typically what you see on this map. Because the cliffs work well for spiders. But it's also pretty easy to get around, so Cloakie and, spiders, or Cloakie and Shields don't fall behind too much. I mean, they can get around here. Really, it's just these cliffs with the purple. These ramps are slow for bots, but they're not impossible to cross. But yeah, that is that. So we are going to be... Oh, I guess that didn't work. So yeah, we're going to be just slowly starting out. Neither player going too aggressively. Sort of. The, we are... Actually, I don't know. Maybe maybe Bloa pretty aggressively going for that south side expansion set. Right next to the plus three max. And at the same time, Dan, we're not... Not sure where they're pushing for. <clears throat> they're trying to get more knowledge than anything else, but they don't have a lot in the way of economy actually set up early. Not to mention, Blow is sending their commander over to the north side as well. That means they could easily grab these northern expansions. So, Bloa being extremely greedy when it comes to their... Well, not extremely. Being notably greedy, but not extremely so. Setting up their bases. Setting up their economy. Setting up everything. It's not really extremely, because, I mean, this is defensible. It's a little extended, but it's not that far. If they were going straight for the plus three in the center and didn't have any defenses around it, or going straight for this 1.9 over here, or doing both north and south simultaneously, then I'd say, then it'd be fair to say it's extremely, but this is just... This is just being very expansionistic. But still, it is working. For the most part, I mean, this fleet could actually take on this metal extractor. It's a little scary. Same time, though, Dan Warrior is trying to get out those Venoms. Again, Venom is currently the spider unit at this point. Spider's kind of Spider Factory is kind of the Venom factory right now. Though we do have Redbacks coming out as well. I mean, Dan, we're not relying entirely on Venoms, which I think is more just underestimating the power of Venoms, to be honest. I mean, yes, Redbacks are strong, and typically you want to build them alongside Redbacks. But, you know, they're not, like, that strong. Or to be more precise... Venom is just really busted right now. So, yeah, Redbacks are good, but you can do most of the work with just Venoms. That being said, Venoms are about the same cost, so... It's not a, the worst thing in the world to do, but yeah, Venoms... I expect to see Venoms get a little tuned down in the next patch. I mean, I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen. It's more... Spider Factory's been relying on Venom... So, on the one hand, yes, Venom is strong. On the other hand, Spider doesn't have a huge other, amount of other options for doing any kind of raiding. Fleas are so frail, and Redbacks aren't... They don't really have the range or the ability... Or the sustain power if they're under any kind of fire. But Venoms are at least reasonably quick. I mean, 84 mm per second compared to a Glaive, I think it's 100 something? 115. Not that much slower. As opposed to Redback, which is 54 in almost per second, which is almost half, which is less than half the speed of a Glaive. So Venoms kind of have, you know, fast skirmisher slow, yeah, no, faster than skirmisher, and slightly slower than Raider speed. Which, considering that they have, like, splash damage like a Riot, the main downside they typically have is a lack of damage, which, considering the stun, is often something that gets worked around. So really, they're a heavy Raider. But they're the only Raider Spider has. 
which is the problem. And I think, I don't know if it'll end up being a buff to fleas or a nerf or like a shift of weight of fleas. Honestly, a buff just more like making it a little more viable or just a nerf to venom. Relying, requiring a bit more tricky play from Spider Factory to work. Macfire in the chat suggesting slower reload. That, that would make actually a lot of sense. That, that is a, that is a really smart idea because the main issue with venom when fighting venom, like look at the bar here. The bar, it just barely, every time right before the attack reloads, with just one Venom at least, it goes from fully stunned down to just barely not stunned. Like, Venom's reload is the exact moment that a fully stunned unit actually stops being stunned. Which means a single Venom can chain stun a single unit. So yeah, I think if you, re if you reduce the reload... I, I mean, they're suggesting lower reload, higher damage. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, keep the DPS the same, but drop the reload time a bit so that units have a chance to run away. Or to get some shots in. And a single Venom can't chain stun a single unit it's fighting. That, that's really clever. Yeah. Good thinking there, Macfire. So, with that, Bloa has lost a couple of their metal extractors, Lost a bit of the economic advantage they started out with, especially with the ones over to the south side that I said were a little bit risky. Well, that risk didn't entirely pay off. Below, however, does have some control over the north side of the map and should be able to take all the metal extractors with uh, maybe a bit of resistance. I mean, I don't think I don't think it's known. And it's probably suspected though. Actually, it will be known in a sec because yeah. Radar dot going over to the top side. Set up another radar dot. Yeah, that's that's definitely known by now. Dan Warrior, if they're paying attention to the north side of the map at all, will know Blow is expanding towards it. And if they know that, well, then they know that Blow is probably going to be vulnerable there, which is exactly what they're acting on. Or so it would appear. I think they're waiting. Man, this is a really good position, though. They have a Widow on the ready. They can throw that into Scout and won't have to worry about it getting spotted. Then, once they find a position to work from, they can nail the Commander. Or in this case, actually nail the Stinger. Which, probably a better option at this point. Either way, now, Loa knows a Widow is on the map, but they were fighting against Spiders. They always knew a Widow's on the map. Oh, no! No! Oh, you've... Oh! Dan Warrior, why? You let the Widow die. That was your ticket. Could have killed off Blow's commander, wiped out the entire expansion effort to the north. Oh, that's gotta hurt. It's 280 metal down the drain because of splash damage off the venom. Oof. Oh, that is always heartbreaking. That's that's the thing about zero K. Like that, that is the trickiest thing about zero K all the time is that pretty much every unit has splash damage in every single unit or building in the game. Well, certainly building. I think not all units, but all buildings will explode and deal some damage in a small radius, or, you know, varying size radius, most small, some very large, around them when they die. Generally, the higher tier energy structures and... The higher tier energy structures blow up the largest. And then, like, factories and pylons blow up, like, not super large, but kind of large, and then everything else just has a tiny little explosion that's... Not a threat to anything that's not a flea, or that has more than, like, 50, 50 HP in the bag. But if it's got less than 50 HP, which is, you know, every single flea from the, the moment of construction to destruction, they are... they're gonna die if they're too close to an exploding building. And also there is ways we why fleas aren't really the most effective unit to use against lotuses like that. They just... I mean, their speed is useless against the tracking fire of the lotus, so yeah. Blow's commander has been stunned. There are, however, enough defensive forces. I don't think the Venom Redback combo is going to be able to cause problems. Ronin are pretty much the counter to Venom Redback. So the fact that Ronin are already in position, Blow's commander is likely safe. Especially as only one of the Redbacks is on a part of the cliff that's even keeping them somewhat safe. That being said, Blow's Commander... No, Blow's Commander is not safe. Knight comes up... Or sorry, Blow's Commander is safe. The Redback isn't safe. Knight comes up to save the day, and that is that. Blow's Commander does survive. Unfortunate. Uh, have you sent those 
units a little bit farther north, they probably would have gotten the commander kill, probably wouldn't have died to the Ronin. But as it stands, they did. Still though, follow-up force coming in here, blows commander under still quite a bit of pressure. They can't really get out of that position without dying. Though the rest of their army coming up to save the day. That looks like Dan Warrior has to fall back. They are just throwing bad armies at, or good armies after bad. Which is an easy way to throw the game away. I mean, they only have 800 metal attrition as a disadvantage. And they're not that far back in terms of economy. Like, one good fight, they'd actually be able to win the attrition battle and get an advantage army-wise. And all right, Dan Warrior actually over to the south side of the map, wiping out Conjurer that was doing exactly that. So Dan Warrior looking to find their way back into this match. Get rid of that knight. That actually will do the trick. At least in terms of numbers. A little tricky to actually pull off, though. Still, I like the fact that they regrouped first. They didn't just go in half-cocked, but it's still a little tricky. They still don't quite have the army to deal with this. Commander over to the south. Under heavy fire. Not quite able to get the conjure the, sorry, the conjure... the caretaker up for themselves either. So again, forced to retreat, and we aren't... We were seeing the shift over to Hermit... Re Hermit Reckless, which I can kind of see? I don't know. I'm... I don't know how well that would work. Danware also leaning heavily into Overdrive. I mean, the fusion plan on top of everything else, that's not a bad idea, considering the circumstances. I mean, it is keeping them even with Bloa, despite the territory disadvantage, but it's... I'm not sure how long it's going to last. I mean, Danware doesn't have a whole lot of room to expand or to really push. I'm trying to deal some damage over to the north side of the map, but Bloa is just turtling up. There's not much to really deal with that. Only one recluse... That's nowhere near enough to get rid of the stingers like this. Although, I gotta say, this is super clever. Like, look at this. The stinger, uh, the recluse is in range of the stinger, but it can't be spotted under the hill. So it's like, you know, what are you gonna do? You can't stop the recluse, because there's a hill in the, there's a mountain in the way. Good use of line of sight. Always, always fun to see people Take advantage of the line of sight mechanics, because, yeah, Reckless shoot high, Stinger shoot in a straight line. They can't do anything about that. So that is... still not a great position for Dan Warrior. Bloa... I mean, they're kind of preventing Dan Warrior from really getting out of that hill, because the Stinger is such a huge threat. And also, or out from behind the hill, because the Stinger's a huge threat. And there's... so many knights. Like, honestly, I'm struggling to think what you'd use against this many knights as spiders. I guess a crab, really, just to, just to provide a distraction. Something for the knights to focus on, which I guess the hermits are doing, actually. So this strategy does seem to be working out reasonably well. And a gunship switch I totally missed, too. Nimbus coming in here, providing some covering fire. More just trying to pro provide suppressant fire, push these units back. Doesn't look like Bloa really respects that. They do, however, respect the Hermit-backed recluses. May not be enough, though. Dan Warrior starting to fall farther and farther behind. Bloa's commander was able to completely build that area up, and as a result, Dan Warrior still trying desperately to take them out, but there's so much protecting them, so much things healing them. Stinger is coming up, though, with four recluses. That is not going to stay standing. Doesn't even get built. Bloa's commander... Well, they'll probably jump away once the threat becomes real to them. Though still, the Nimbuses are managing to provide Danware enough space to start rebuilding some metal extractors, get some reclaim. Actually threaten the center pretty considerably. This center metal extractor has nothing defending it. So the Nimbus... That was a really strong choice by Danwarrior. Same time, also opening up the south side of the map, allowing them to build up some metal extractors, to, or at least to set themselves up with their own little defensive beachhead on the top there. I like it. Okay, center super mechs goes down. Bloa losing some of their economic advantage. Still, though, a ton of it's coming out of overdrive themselves. They have they have the advanced geo. Dan, we're just with the basic. 
So the overdrive advantage is no longer relevant. Blow his commander as well. They are... They don't even care. The stinger here. Operating with the caretaker. Support that is not going to... Yeah, that recklesses are trying. But it's not going to be enough. Although, no, the reckless come in. New reckless coming in are going to be enough to knock that stinger... Oh! The accuracy! Oh! That Reckless unable to take out the Stinger. It had a tiny window to do it and unfortunately missed with one of the missiles that it would need to do it. Oh, that's... That's just too painful. Bloa should be able to take it from here. Dan Warrior, that was kind of their last stand. If they could take out that Stinger and start pushing through from there, there'd be a chance, but... No, that... That ship has sailed. Not with this set of units, though. Like... Again, a crab I could see, and a crab is on the way. I'm seeing revenants come up as well, but the entire north side, they got flak. I got threshers. That's pretty well handling that, so yeah, if you Yeah, the entire north side. Oops. Entire north side kinda done. So with that, there is not a whole lot that Danware can do to the north side of the map. The south side of the map. Oh, they lost. They lost hard. I oh, sorry, I missed that explosion, but yeah, the Dan Warrior's commander was not fortunate. Not as lucky as Blow is. Not as well prepared, I'm afraid. So they've lost that entire threat over to the south side of the map, other than maybe just bashing it down. I mean, granted, they're playing spider. They could drop a. Re they could bring weavers over here and take it out that way, or take it that way after taking it out with gunships, because there aren't as many anti-air forces over here. I mean, there's gremlins. That's true. But, there's nothing really building new stuff. Like, all, the conjurer, the only conjurer in the area just died. So there's actually a lot of room to start taking out metal extractors, taking out overdrive, or taking out pylons at least. Doing quite a bit of damage to the back lines. Like, yeah, the north side's fully secured. We got a tank factory on top of as well. But the south side? No, there's plenty of room. Take out the pylons, cut off the overdrive. Dan Weir can maybe start pulling things back, supporting fire off of the Nimbuses. I mean... Ooh, spots the advanced geo plant. That goes down, I think... I think that could be what Dan Weir needs. That's down! Takes out the Revenant, but that's fine. Wipes out Blow's entire economy. Or, not entire economy. Wipes out half of Blow's energy economy. Wipes out pretty much the entire overdrive. Revenant's sacrifice was truly noble as Dan Warrior now able to start fighting on even footing. And already they had the attrition about even. The army value is still higher for below because of the advantage they had. But now there's a chance. Not to mention, okay, maybe even higher, but at the same time, chainsaws and threshers everywhere actually might not be so bad. Let's double check the stats on this. Oops. Double check the stats on this. Sorry about that. Double check the stats on this. Army value. Blow is still way ahead. 7,000 metal ahead. So, okay. It's not quite that bad. It's not quite that great for Dan Warrior. It's a small chance, and the reclaim is certainly helping out with that, but it's still a chance. Switching over to rovers as well, getting some badgers on top of the crabs. Really focusing on artillery, which, considering the circumstances with, you know, all of these stingers, is an understandable choice. Same time, though, they are still going for Nimbuses. I'm not sure where they're going to be able to find a place to, you know, have Nimbuses live, as pretty much everything outside of their base is covered by anti-air. I mean, yeah, if you get a crab in, deal some damage, take out, or badgers or whatever, take out some of the, some of the chainsaws, or, well, mainly the chainsaws, it might be the thresher. Then yeah, you got a chance there, but that's that's a tall order. Like, if Dan Warrior is able to push that hard, do that much damage, then I'd say that they actually have the advantage to the point that they could be able to just continue pushing into Blowa's main base. And yeah, that chainsaw oh, once again. Nope, that's a dead Nimbus. Another dead Nimbus. Thankfully for Dan Warrior, it died in their territory, but still. Dead Nimbus. Live Dommies, though. 
In fact, that's... Oh yeah, Dommy Badger with some Ripper support. That is the entire plan. Not a bad plan. On the other hand, okay, I said Crab could use, be used as a distraction for the Knights. There was supposed to be a follow-up force in that particular instance. That wasn't meant to be something that just happens on its own. Well, at any rate, that's looking pretty iffy. Dami as well not even finding units to take over. Oof. Yeah, Dan where I'm afraid, it's just not really putting the force in the right spot. Like, I feel like that's kind of in the story of this game. They've had... They haven't been too far behind for the most part. I mean, the end of the game, yes, they have been, but... For a lot of the game, they were relatively even. They had really good positions. They had some clever ideas of unit compositions. The problem has just consistently been that the units are just not quite in the position they need to be in. Like, the... When they were killing, trying to kill the commander, the... Vanna Redback could have gone on top of the cliff and didn't. And would have survived long if they had. Probably killed the commander. The Redbacks earlier here when they were trying... Or sorry, the Recluses earlier here trying to take out the Stingers were not regrouped to do so. To get all that damage all at once. And the Nimbuses... I mean, I actually don't have any problem with the way the Nimbuses worked because they opened up a lot of space. But still, that... I expect it would have... Like, they could have moved back. That's the bigger thing. Nimbuses should have moved back once the anti-air became real. Like, once Chainsaws were built up, Nimbuses needed to retreat. Not advance. Like, Dan Warrior knows there are Nimbuses there. Or, sorry, there are Chainsaws there. Going for a Crow as well? Oh, uh, 40 metal per second. I mean, there's there is the option. It's not like... I don't know. I don't know. That's a minute. Uh, I'm not liking that. I mean, I can see what the plan is. You take the crow, you move it over here, you wipe out the factory and everything, building up to the north side of the map, breaking a hole open, allowing you to start doing some damage against Blow's economy, and also get rid of some of the anti-air defenses, allowing you to come in with lighter air units, and also maybe push in with some ground units. But the problem there is there are no ground units to do that with, and Tremors and Emissaries are on the way. I mean, they're going for the spider factory, not for the, not for the gunship factory, but... You know, I think this is because they don't... Do they know it's there? No, they just don't know it's there. Just because it happens to be outside of radar range. So it's entirely coincidental that the gunship factory is not being attacked right now. Not to mention that Tremors should be able to take out one of the caretakers, possibly some of the storages. If it takes a fusion, it's over. I mean, really, the, the death explosion is going to be more than enough to kill everything. So, yeah... Oh, I can't see it from here. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, 2,000, 2000 damage along all this. Yeah, that would take out all the caretakers. The crow, however, has been completed. It's going out. It's... It's certainly trying. I expect bomb drop right now. There it is. Okay, gets some defense. I doubt this is about Dan where I expect it to be used. Not able to get rid of the knights either. It's stunned out. That is the crow. That is probably game. I don't think Dan... Yeah, Dan Warrior throws in the towel. That is game. Valiant effort. I mean, hey, you might as well... I guess the crow wasn't the worst idea, but there wasn't any support for us by that point, and... Yeah, I mean, the game was already lost. It was just Dan Warrior. Last act of defiance. Maybe finding a clutch thing. Maybe. But that's that. Anyhow, that is going to be it for the stream today. Some interesting games. Some rather dynamic games. This is actually the only kind of static one that ended up turning to a lot of static defenses and artillery. Because the other two, there's a lot going on around the map overall. Anyhow, that is that. So thank you all for watching. And until next time, have a good night, everyone.